friends, we're glad you're here. As you can see, we packed a couple hundred crazy airmen out here into the field house, and there's a very unique looking setup on this floor. We'll find out why in just a few minutes. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Schriever Air Force Base with the best and the brightest from Team Schriever, this is the live open announcement of 16.4 presented by LifeProof. For the 2016 Open, we've crisscrossed the nation from a huge affiliate in the West. And Emily Abbott will take 16.1 to a home garage in the East. And Dan Bailey will get it. Dan Bailey has finished 16.2. And down south for a clash between experience and youth. Three to go, two and one. Age and experience will reign supreme in 16.3. Next, we head to the Rocky Mountains and Colorado Springs, home to the U.S. Olympic Training Center, Pikes Peak, and the Air Force Academy. A perfect spot for this week's military theme. Tonight, Schriever Air Force Base plays host to an epic battle between two of Iceland's CrossFit queens. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, who stunned the CrossFit world last July in her first games, nearly taking the top prize. And Katrin David's daughter, who upset her countrywoman in 2015's final event and now holds the title Fittest Woman on Earth. Two of the best in the world in an Icelandic rematch. 16.4 is next. Now, CrossFit's ties with the military run deep. That's why we're honored not just to be here on base, but also to host three airmen from right here at Schriever in tonight's open announcement. Now, they had to win this honor by way of competition on this very floor. You guys want to meet these airmen? Third place from that qualifying event from 2nd Space Operations Squadron, 1st Lieutenant Mark Skinner. From that very same squadron, another first lieutenant. Please welcome Greg Overton. Now the top qualifying event, or time from that event, came from a young lady in the fourth space operations squadron. Please give it up for Jessica Trundy. All right, you, you were a little bit nervous earlier. How are you feeling now? A little better. Okay, loosen up. We're here to have fun, right? Better. Okay. This much better. Hey, that's, that's a little bit. That's good. So I understand you have a special shout-out tonight. What, tell me about that. Yeah, my husband's currently deployed with uh, the 160th Special Operations Aviation Unit, and uh, I just wanted to say I love you. He's streaming, so. Watch this right now. We're thinking about you, big guy. Good luck tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet our CrossFit Games athletes. Now, their battle at the 2015 Games was legendary. Now, these two Icelandic women will pick up exactly where they left off. This first young lady held the white leader's jersey for eight consecutive events as a rookie. She finished third at the Games. Please welcome Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Tonight, she faces her countrywoman, who in her third appearance at the CrossFit Games took the title. She is your reigning and defending fittest woman on earth. Give it up for Katrin, David's daughter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the announcement of Open Workout 16.4, the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. The previous tests each had a unique look. 16.1 was a triplet with a 20 minute time domain. 16.2 was also a triplet with decreasing reps, increasing load and escalating time if of course you earned it. 16.3 was a classic chipper. So therefore, of course, 16.4 is a chipper. The first movement in the chipper is the deadlift. 225 pounds for the men, 
155 for the women. You will, they will, pick up that bar and put it back down 55 times. On completion of that, they will move to the next station where they will complete, you will complete, 55 wall balls. Next, you will perform 55 calories on the Concept 2 rower. And this chipper ends with 55 handstand push-ups. 16.4 is 55 deadlifts, 55 wall ball, 55 calories, 55 handstand push-ups. As many reps, and if you're really, really, really good, one round and as many reps as possible in 13 minutes. At the call of three, two, one, go, the athlete may grab the bar and begin their deadlift. Each deadlift begins with the barbell on the ground and finishes when the athlete stands up the weight to full extension of the knees and hips, with their shoulders behind the bar at the top of the movement. During every repetition of the wall ball, the athlete must squat below parallel. That means that the hip crease is clearly below the top of the knee. After the athlete has squatted below parallel, they will get credit for the repetition when the ball hits the wall above the designated target. The center of the ball must be clearly above the marked target for the wall ball shot to count. For the row, the monitor must be clearly visible and read zero calories at the start. The athlete must remain seated with their hands on the handle until their display clearly reads 55 calories. Once the workout begins, only the athlete is allowed to touch their rower or monitor. Every repetition of the handstand push-up must have the athlete's heels start above the line, have the head make contact with the floor at the bottom, and finish with the heels above the line. Your score is the total number of repetitions completed in the 13 minutes. All right, I've got Dave Castro with me. He's announced a chipper workout. Dave, any special notes for the movements in this workout? Most of the movements are pretty straightforward. You know, with the deadlift, just make sure you, you open up your hip and, and uh, have full, full extension at the top. The big movement is gonna be the handstand push-up. And we're using the same standard that we used last year when we introduced it. And uh, make sure you get your setup. Uh, take the time before you do the workout to make sure your setup's accurate and make sure you have some reps and, and verify that, that it's uh, the correct position for you before, before just jumping into it. So in, in this chipper, the preparation and setting everything up is gonna be critical, especially setting up the handstand push-up. Thanks, Dave. There you have it from the man himself, but what are your questions that remain? Hit us up on Twitter, use the handle and the hashtag CrossFit Games. I'll try and get you an answer from Dave or from the athletes in the cool down show as well. Also unique to this week for one week only, we're also using the hashtag ShreverStrong. Please use that, show some love to our military and especially our fine hosts here at the base of uh, Shriver Air Force Base. They've been fantastic. Now, many of us in CrossFit have the ability to use our fitness for recreation, but there's many of us who need to use a high level of fitness for operational success in the line of duty. Since its inception, CrossFit training has been adopted by many in the law enforcement, firefighting, and military communities as the training program to prepare operators for real-world demands of their jobs. When the stakes are the highest, being prepared for the unknown and unknowable is non-negotiable. Since the beginning, CrossFit has supported the military through a program of no-cost affiliation and level one training at bases both in the U.S. and overseas, even to forward operating units in remote locales. 
But CrossFit's connection with the military goes much deeper. When a CrossFitter dies in the line of duty, they are honored with a workout in their name. This tradition of homage was born when two Middle East wars raged in the early 2000s, and the CrossFit community was hit hard by losses to their military brethren. These workouts are approached with reverence, not only because of the physical challenge they provide, but also the burden they represent. If something hurts, you kind of forget about it and try to push through it because the pain and hurt that they went through to become a hero workout is much more significant than what you're feeling at the moment. Military units use hero workouts and CrossFit training to attain a level of fitness that keeps them combat ready. All right, friends, I now have with me a man who's got a very important role here on the base and is also very tied into the fitness community, Colonel Jason Janeros. Uh, Colonel, could you please tell me a little bit more about your role? Sure. I'm the 50th Mission Sport Group Commander here at Team Shriver, part of the greatest Air Force in the world. I'm, it's my great privilege every day to work alongside these airmen. One of my principal responsibilities as group commander is to make sure these airmen are fit to fight, whether that's at home or downrange in a deployed environment. Tell me a little bit more about that. You know, for a lot of CrossFitters, it's a recreational activity, but for airmen, it's imperative to their job. Sure. Frankly, it could be the difference between life and death. So CrossFit's in the business of forging elite fitness. We're in the business of forging elite airmen. Outstanding. Uh, we talked about this environment. It's easy to get, uh, you know, ahead of yourself. There's three airmen tonight who are going to be competing. How do you think they're going to do? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, they're obviously against world-class professionals, but I've learned never bet against any of our armed forces. Uh, I will tell you, uh, one of our core values is excellence in all we do, and I will expect nothing less this evening. Shriver strong. Yes. Colonel Generos, thank you, sir. Thanks very much. Well, I appreciate it. Speaking of the airmen, we have another special guest who's joining us tonight, the ninth place finisher from the CrossFit Games, Margo Alvarez, and she's been helping these airmen strategize and get ready for the workout. So what did you tell them? What advice? They're not used to this environment. So I spoke to each one of them, kind of asked them what their weaknesses were, what their strengths were, and kind of gave them some information based on that. So for Jessica, a little bit, we might break up the deadlifts a little bit early, get through those wall balls and get through the rowing. It's a little more challenging, she said, for her, but I know she can do it. Um, again, they're already prepared for what they're doing in their job regularly. So think being on this big stage will be a no other place. They'll do great. So I'm excited to watch them. Right. And you've seen them warm up. You've seen them move a little bit. What do you expect? How do you think they'll do? I think they'll do great. I've watched them warm up just kind of, again back there in the rec room. And uh, they're well prepared for it. And they're, again, they know their bodies and how they're going to move. And so these movements, I think they'll do great with. So it'll be good, night, good to kind of coach them and, again, cheer them on through this. How about you as an athlete? You like, you like this workout? Uh, yes, I do like this workout. I do love deadlifts. Um, I'm excited to actually try this out and see how it goes. It's a good chipper, so I'm excited. Well, we might try and drag you into it later here at altitude, but uh, we'll talk about that later right now, just moments away from the competition. So we'll go up to the booth where Chase Ingram is standing by with Cherie Chan. Thanks, Rory. Well, we have two Icelandic women competing today, but today we're all Irish. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody across the world. I'm Chase Ingram, and alongside with me, seminar staff flowmaster Sheree Chan. And Sheree, as we look at Katrin and Sarah, obviously very similar looking athletes, but on paper very similar as well. They're practically twins. Same height. They're about a few months within the same age. Same weight, same nationality, same beautiful smile. They look very similar on paper. So similar on paper, but now that the event has been released, what are the differences between the two that might be difference making for this particular workout? You can make a lot of assertions when you look at numbers and workouts on paper, but the biggest thing that stands out to me is their experience. Katrin's going in with four years of competing experience, whereas this is Sarah's second. This is a very high pressure scenario. You're not at home in your comfortable gym. You've got all these people. The world is watching you. And I don't care if they tell you the Open's not important. They both want to win. So this is an extremely high-pressure environment, and that experience might play a little bit. And a little bit of a unique environment. We have our two top three fittest women in the world competing against each other. But we also have three airmen competing as well who actually had to qualify to get to this position right now. Such a unique, fun thing. They held a local competition here on the base to see who could compete with these ladies. It was a classic chipper style workout, similar movements that we're seeing in this workout. They didn't know that. Um, and top three people came out here. Now the catch, the fourth place, fifth place, sixth place finisher, they're the judges. So you know there's going to be a ton of pressure on them holding the standards. So particular to this event, the, it's been announced a classic time frame, 13 minutes, a chipper style workout. 
simple moves, but what's the catch here for this particular event today? It's spicy. I look at that number of 55, and I have a little bit of like a pit in my heart and in my stomach. That 55 number is going to be hard to navigate. We're used to the 21, 15, 9, or even on the opposite end, the workouts that have hundreds that you get through, and you strategize specifically for that. This is different. This is How are you going to attack that 55 in especially here at the location that we're at. So I'm anxious to see how this goes down today to, to create my own strategy. So we have what we see on paper, but what about the things we don't see? What's gonna surprise these athletes today? The number one thing, other than how frigid cold it is in this particular arena, is going to be the altitude. Both women train at sea level, and they have come up to 6,000 feet. And I don't care how fit you are, you will still be better than the world, but <laughs> you will feel the effects in your performance from altitude. So they're gonna perform very well, but they will feel it. Well, take a deep breath, get a sip of green beer, and buckle up, because 16.4 is about to kick off, and no one better than the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. David's daughter and Sarah Sigmund's daughter just hearing the event for 30 the very seconds. first time, getting very minimal warm up. We've heard before this is very challenging for these athletes at these open announcements, and they are not alone as they have three airmen ready to do battle with them in 16.4. 10 seconds. Athletes get in position. Three, two, one, go. 16.4 is open and ready for fitness at Schriever Air Force Pace. Katrin David's daughter and Sarah Sigmund's daughter going head to head as they left off at the CrossFit Games last year in 2015. Katrin taking that first place, Sarah in third, and they will start with 55 deadlifts at 155 pounds. And Chase, we saw that Sarah dropped that intentionally first before Katrin did. She has a plan. And I don't know if you watched the open updates with Pat Shorey where he talked to both of these ladies before. But Sarah said two movements she wanted to see, deadlift and handstand push-ups. So she got her present here today. Definitely saw the smile on her face when Dave Cashew announced deadlifts were going to start 16.4. Sarah Sigmund's daughter has just a slight edge on Katrin Davis' daughter. If you look at the top part of your screen, your leader between the two athletes will be in blue as the red athlete will denote how many reps back they are. Katrin will take a break at 40. Sarah Sigmund's daughter will pick it up at the same time as well as our three airmen who qualified to be here in a chipper style event. And Sheree, you're talking about altitude. Katrin and Sarah don't have experience with this altitude, but the three athletes competing with them today do. They absolutely do it. And I don't know if you just noticed what happened there with Sarah. I don't think she intended to break that at 47, 48 reps. She took a huge deep breath and looked just a tad, tad bit winded or surprised there. But yeah, these airmen, they've done this before. They train here every day. Sarah off the deadlift first, and she will miss her first wall ball shot. It's a 14-pound ball to a 9-foot target. Katrin Davis is about 20 seconds behind her. And Shree, when we first heard this announced, it was really hard to digest exactly how challenging these deadlifts were going to be. You, you, you spoke earlier about it's not that middle of the pack rep scheme, middle of the pack weight. I think both of those combined together can be very devastating if you don't pace it out well. Very winning to pull that bar off the ground at that weight for 55 reps. And now, one of the most winding movements that we have, you know, basically the thruster with a ball, a wall ball, um, is known for just crushing people's engines. So, and they're getting huge sets. This just goes to show how unbelievably athletic these women really are. Just past the 2.30 mark, Sarah Sigmund's daughter has a five rep lead on Katrin Davis' daughter, who's on the left in the green shorts. Our three airmen 
on the back platforms working through the refs, but stepping forward at the right part of your screen, Jessica Trundy, who actually won that qualifier chipper, has moved up to join our two women. For good reason she won that chipper coming up. That was amazing, getting those deadlifts done in under three minutes. Jessica Trundy onto her first set of wall balls. 14 pound ball to a nine foot target as both Greg Overton and Mark Skinner are still on their platforms trying to keep pace with Jessica. But Sarah Sigmund's daughter has just three more reps remaining before she is finished through her set of 55 wall ball and she'll miss just hitting the bottom of the target. And that might leave a little bit room for David's daughter to catch up. But Sigmund's daughter at 336 is on to the rower and we move from one exhausting movement to another. I tell you what though, Chase, I, I hate to say this, but I think the row is where you're gonna catch your breath. Um, <laughs> Sounds silly coming out, but when you've just done those deadlifts and those wall balls and it really gets your heart rate up and you're winning, you can settle in here and you can recover on this 55 calorie. And I'd like to point out, they still have eight minutes left in this event. They're going to get through this round. Sarah Sigmund's daughter holds a 20 second lead on Katrin Davis' daughter. It was the same amount she had coming off the deadlift. So Katrin didn't lose any time on the wall balls as Mark Skinner, Greg Overton, and Jessica Trundy are on their set of 55 wall ball shots. You can look for the ladies, uh, whoever would be in the lead to be at about 165 to know that they're getting close to get off that rower. And that'll, that'll keep you on track to how much longer they need to be on there. As Sigmund's daughter still has a nine rep lead on Katrin Davis' daughter, she's about 18 calories in. We have two races going on at the same time. Second Lieutenant Jessica Trundy in blue at the top part of your screen is 86 reps in. She'll need to get to 110 to finish her wall ball shots. And she's moved 17 and 26 reps ahead of her fellow airmen. Showing why she took first place in the event to be here in front of everybody and to make her husband proud overseas. Past the five minute mark, your three airmen being led by Jessica Trundy. She has about 13 reps to go before she moves to the rower herself. But the race in on the rower is between Sarah Sigmund's daughter and Katrin Davis' daughter. And Sarah has moved up. She had an eight rep lead getting to the rower. She's extended that to about 11. You can see the top part of your screen. The reps donate, donated by Katrin's name is how many she is behind Sigmund's daughter. And Cherie, like you said, 165 is the number to see. So she's about 22 reps off of getting off the rower. And more importantly, looking at the watts, that pace that the two were holding, Katrin was holding right about uh, 900, a little below, and Sarah's holding 967, about 1,000. So we're getting a little more power out of Sarah right now, which means she's going to keep her lead, and you can tell by looking at how much she's pulling ahead here. And to your point, Sheree, you said this is the time where you can almost recover or rest on the rower. 900 cows <laughs> pace-wise, this is a pretty easy pace for most Female athletes, you see the guys tend to creep over around. Definitely around. not me, but maybe, but maybe other most. <laughs> maybe for these two ladies. <laughs> yeah. But this is definitely, you can tell that they're almost biding their time knowing that you can get through the handstand push-ups quickly if you're efficient, but you didn't blow yourself up getting to it. And she is still holding a high pace, right there at about 920 to 940 right there. And she's getting ready for that second movement that she wanted out of this open workout. Hand in the air for Sarah Sigmund's daughter as she's moved her reps past Katrin by 13. Jessica Trundy is on to the rower at the seven minute mark. Six minutes remaining of this 13 minute AMRAP as 16.4 is live and underway at Schriever Air Force Base. And Sarah Sigmund's daughter at the 7.10 mark will waste no time and she will move into her 55 handstand push-ups. That transition from the rower to just go right overhead and bust out reps. She has done right now about 15 already to start as her first set. 
The number you're looking for to finish out the entirety of the round is 220 repetitions. At the top part of your screen, Sarah Sigmund's daughter is at 185. And you can see how fast you can tick these handstand push-up reps away because David's daughter has moved back 23 reps at one calorie to go. David's daughter will join Sigmund's daughter on the wall right about the eight-minute mark with five minutes remaining. Plenty of time to get back to those deadlifts. It's just waiting for them. Super. Now, Sarah has gotten a few no reps from her judge. She's struggling to get her heels over that line right now. And that line denoted previously before they started this, it was the same one they had last year. Height dependent for the athletes, but it is very tough to get as you get more fatigued because it does matter as far as hand placement and making sure your heels get over the top of that taped line. And you can see how she's being much more deliberate now in each one of those. So she doesn't lose any more reps. Mark Skidder in the four part of your screen of our three airmen tackling 16.4 still on the 55 wall ball shots, but alone on the rower. Jessica Trundy is just destroying these two guys. You can see the combination of movements is starting to catch up with her. The rowing is looking slightly like it's in slow motion, so she's trying to catch her breath after just really doing a phenomenal job on those deadlifts and wall balls. Four minutes remaining until we hit the 13-minute cap for 16.4. Sigmund's daughter has lost some of that extended lead on Katrin's David's daughter. At this point, she's lost about eight reps. And what you'll notice the difference between these two women is that Katrin is really pointing her toes down very significantly. And uh, Sarah, now you can see she did it there, is starting to do it more dramatically in order to get that heel over that line. And what are the couple things that she can actually do to make that a little bit easier Pull to get herself her up there? a little closer to the wall or point those toes down. Make sure that your hip doesn't go back towards the wall. That shortens you as well. So there's several things you can do. Sigmund's daughter at 218. 220 is the number she needs before she's done with her final repetition. And right under the 10-minute mark, Sarah Sigmund's daughter has three minutes remaining to work her way back down the chipper. And it was just waiting for her over on the platform to pick up that deadlift. And I want to make some bets that she's getting to that wall ball. It took her about a minute and 45 seconds on the first go round. She has three minutes in total to get back to the med balls. Still able to do a big set of 10. Sigmund's daughter has 15 reps done of the 55 she needs to complete. As we're slowly approaching the 11 minute mark, David's daughter in the back part of your screen. Few reps left for her to go. Katrin started right in the middle of her set of handstand push ups, starting to get no rep as well. So, similar experience. And there you can see her judge just no rep on that handstand. You've really got to pay attention uh, to where your body is, the hips, where your hands are, where your heels are, in order to make that rep count. As David's daughter is trying to track down Sarah Sigmund's daughter, our two airmen, Mark Skinner and Greg Overton, has finally joined the rower with Jessica Trundy. Jessica winning that qualifier that Schriever Air Force Base held to qualify to compete here today for 16.4. She'll probably be off the rower done herself pretty soon. And it appears as though Sarah is really competing against herself now and against the leaderboard in order to keep herself up at the top of the open and really not have to do this event again when she leaves here. Sigmund's daughter, 255 reps to go. 275 is the number you're looking for as Katrin Davis' daughter has 30 reps to make up but only 60 seconds to go. Katrin's Davis' daughter is to the bar as Sigmund's daughter has 20 more reps before she finishes. Definitely a far cry from the first round starting off this event. And look at the look on Katrin's face. She is just in the zone. She's going to try to hold on to that bar as long as possible to catch up. We 
we've seen her ability to hang on to some heavy deadlifts before as that actually led to her winning the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. Sigmund's daughter, David's daughter, back and forth on the deadlifts. 20 seconds remaining. Sigmund's daughter has 10 reps to go, nine. Can she get through these deadlifts? She's running out of time as David's daughter is doing everything she can to just stay within striking distance. Five reps and only five seconds to go. Can Sigmund's daughter get through the deadlifts at the buzzer? And with one rep shy, Sarah Sigmund's daughter will take 16.4. Sarah Singer's daughter was definitely excited to come for this event today when it was announced. Her engine and athletic capacity was amazing. She came off of this deadlift first, went over to the wall ball, and started to face a little bit of adversity here with the wall ball by getting that no rep. Hung on, kept her mind about her. Got her last one, gets away from her, gets another no rep, gets on the roll, held a high pace on this row. Really, I don't think it dipped much below a 950 watt the entire time. Really phenomenal there. And then she heads on over to the handstand push-ups where she starts to now face even a little bit more adversity, which we saw with Katrin as well. She got several no reps, don't exactly know how many, and then started to change her strategy. You can see how her hip is really heading back towards that wall, causing her to be slightly shorter, but the question was, anybody going to finish it? She got through 54 more deadlifts before the clock finished up. Just a phenomenal display of athleticism by these two females. Sarah Singer's daughter, 54 reps of the 55, trying to finish out the deadlifts, as she will take 16.4 over Katrin Davis' daughter. Your unofficial results, Sigmund's daughter, 274 total reps. Katrin Davis' daughter, 246. And Sarah Sigmund, Sigmund's daughter will take 16.4. I would say the most impressive part, Cherie, was not just Sarah's performance while she was doing the movements, but it was her transitions between them. That was probably the biggest difference maker between those. The one I noticed significantly was the row to the handstand push-up. She got off of the rower, basically ran to the wall, kicked herself up, and started banging out her, a set of 15 handstand push-up. Absolutely incredible. Well, 274 for Sarah Sigmund's daughter. She will take 16.4. Your winner is down on the floor with Rory McKernan. Sarah, amazing performance. What was the plan going into the workout when you first heard it? I was going to pace myself. And then Katrin went like 40 unbroken deadlifts. I was like, okay, <laughs> stick to your game plan. You'll just go unbroken in the wall balls instead. And it was easier than I thought. So, but <laughs> Well, when, when did it finally hit you? When, when did, the, did you feel the altitude at all? No, I didn't. <laughs> I just felt my back and the deadlifts on the way back. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired in my back. But the hands and push-ups were harder than I remember from last year. It was like hard to go over the line. Yeah. <sighs> and you came back, you grabbed onto the bar. The look on your face was just like uh, pure determination. What were you thinking? I was like, okay, you're going to go to the rower. And I was like 20 deadlifts, and there was one minute left. I was like, okay, just finish the deadlifts. And I needed one more deadlift. <laughs> so close, so, yeah, close. so close. Well, what does this early season win mean for you going into the 2016 season? <sighs> so good. It was really good. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, amazing performance. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Well, Sarah and Katrin are household names because of their performances at the CrossFit Games. But long before the Games ever existed, we had the original Fire Breathers, both amazing coaches and athletes. And on the top of that list of heroes for me is Nicole Carroll. She's also been a champion for the seminars of CrossFit, getting the CrossFit methodology approved internationally accredited through ANSI. She's one of my personal heroes. I think she's one of the baddest of the badasses. And I think you should know that before you see this message from Nicole on how to approach 16.4. 16.4, it's a 13 minute AMRAP with 55 deadlift, wall ball, row for calories, and handstand push-ups. This one's got a little something for everyone. 
The big takeaway here is really to get to your handstand push-ups as quickly as possible. Granted, that's a little easier said than done. The deadlift load is hefty, the sets are large. For most of us, we're gonna have to break it up. Exactly how you break it up depends on your capacity, but the idea is don't get yourself into such a big deficit that you have to take long rest mid-set. Unfortunately, we can't break up the row, so we just kinda have to buckle in and gut it out. Now, we're rowing for calories. At this point in the game, just choose a damper that has a comfortable resistance for you and settle into rhythmic, powerful, and efficient pulls. You'll be gassed when you get to the handstand push-ups, but you'll still have lots of life left in your shoulders, so kick up on that wall and get a few reps even if you don't feel like it. Now, that said, the set is large, so use your big kip right from the start and don't go to failure. Unlike 16.3, we won't be managing a single point of fatigue on this one. Instead, we're giving complementary movements, and this allows us to go from movement to movement relatively quickly. It's just a grind, and all that's going to be in your way is a little bit of metabolic discomfort, but that's okay. You're tough. You can handle this one. Go get them, and good luck. All right, you guys have just a couple more seconds to catch your breath because we're going to deliver now the unofficial results for your workout. Trundy, 160 reps, takes first place for all of the airmen. Let's hear it. Now, what are the chances you two men tied exactly to the rep? 149 reps apiece. Tremendous performance, guys. Great job. Where does this rank on uh, the crazy factor in your life? Oh, man. Uh, those deadlifts were unexpected. They came out of nowhere and kicked my butt. Uh, probably the worst open this year so far. But uh, still fun? Oh, way fun. This is one of the most fun things I've ever done. Right on. Uh, Greg, we talked uh, at the gym the other day, and you had an awesome outlook on how you're going to approach this workout with your attitude. Tell me about that. So my attitude was that uh, <clears throat> nobody knows how well I'm supposed to do. No one knows who I am, so they're just looking for my attitude. So I want to keep positive, keep moving. And uh, I tell you, I've never felt so useless on a rower before. <laughs> it made me very nervous watching you guys, knowing that I've got to do it as well. So you were super nervous before this thing went down. How are you feeling now that it's all said and done? I'm still trying to breathe. Um, my ribs feel like they're caving in. Um, but this was just like literally the most incredible thing we could ever be a part of. So we're so grateful. Right on. You guys were amazing. Thank you so much. Hey, Shreve, let's hear it for your airmen. All right, one more big round of applause for the ladies from Iceland, Katrin David's daughter and Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Huge thanks to our host, Schriever Air Force Base. This has been amazing. We hope that we can do it again soon. And of course, to all the men and women in uniform for your sacrifice and your service. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Now that's it for the show. But coming up is the cool down show. We hope you can join us for that. And then of course, later on, it'll be 16.3 Rovers Boz at altitude. We're actually gonna have uh, airmen four, five, and six from the qualifying event join us on the floor. So you can check that out on Facebook right after the cool down show. Otherwise, one week remains, my friends, and we're going back to where it all started for the final week. We'll see you guys in Aromas, and until then, I'll see you on the leaderboard. Good night. The end of the Open is one week away, and we head back to where it all started, the ranch in Aromas, California. Three of the sport's best will duel in the dust. Rich Froning, the fittest man in history. Ben Smith, the defending CrossFit Games champion. Matt Fraser, the only man to finish second twice in Carson. It's the grand finale, 16.5, live from the historic ranch, next week on games.crossfit.com.
just one week remains in the open. Our community has sweat together, persevered together, and triumphed together. Now, we cheer together as the fittest among us advance to the second stage of the CrossFit Games season, the regionals. The top men, women, and teams in the world take center stage with a trip to the CrossFit Games on the line. Nothing is guaranteed. Every trip must be earned. Three weekends in May, eight regional events, each with just five spots up for grabs. Only the top 40 men, women, and teams compete at the ultimate proving grounds in Carson, California. Be there to see the best at the 2016 Reebok CrossFit Games Regionals. Tickets on sale March 28th. Welcome back, friends. This is the Cool Down Show. We have all the athletes who took the floor this evening and Dave Castro joining us as well. But uh, Katrin, I'm going to talk to you first. How did this one feel? I mean, you, you, you heard it from Dave. What was your plan? And then how'd you change it? Um, that was a great workout. I, um, I love chippers, um, fun movements, uh, really spicy. Um, I kind of thought of it as, you know, just find your threshold, hold that, and then you know, when you've got the extra kick at the end, then go. This workout went by so fast. I remember I finished the first round and Kiki's like, 30 seconds to go. And I was like, I thought she said like one and 30 or two 30 and I look at the clock and I'm like, oh my gosh, go. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was fun. So there wasn't a plan necessarily. You didn't know what you were gonna do rep wise on each movement, um, you just played it by ear? I kind of knew, like I opened up with 15s. I think I did like three set of 15s and a 10 on the deads. Um, Kind of like was going to break the wall balls into twos, but I um, wasn't sure how it would feel to work out in this altitude. So kind of just like go with like a baseline plan and then, you know, you take it from there. Sure. And let's talk about, we were just talking about your reps on the deadlift. You were yeah. thinking, what was it, 12, 11? I did uh, 13, 12, 10, 10, 10. Or that was the plan. I have no idea what I did. <laughs> <laughs> there was one eight in there. I saw it. Oh, you dropped okay. It by that. But it was pretty burly. Yeah. Um, and so as, uh, how much does, does it factor in the head to head, Katrin? It, um, I don't know. I kind of just try and focus on how I'm feeling and can I go faster or can I not? Of course, I know she's there and I can hear when you guys are like, Sarah's got this, Catherine's yeah, yeah, got yeah. this. <laughs> so you can kind of hear it, but um, I don't know. I, you can't let someone else push you or it'll hold you back. Sure. Dave, I got a question for you coming from Twitter. And this particular question is coming from Hey, you know what? I'll just ask you about the workout. What did you think? Because before, you were saying you weren't sure if people were going to get through one round, correct? No, I, I knew that the best would get through one round. I didn't think they'd get so far in the deadlift. She almost finished. She was one rep away from finishing all the deadlift and getting back to the wall ball. So seeing that, there will be people who do reps at the wall ball, not at the rower. But, um, but that's a select few. There's not going to be a lot of people who make it to one round and all the way back. So that's an impressive... Um, that's going to be the top scores, obviously. Sure. I have a question for you guys. Do you plan on redoing it, potentially? Yes, Monday. Cool. Yes. Okay. We're finishing the wall balls. Okay, great. Oh, great. There you go. <laughs> All right, how about you guys? Uh, what, what, how was this experience working out? I mean, I, I assume you're fans of the CrossFit Games. You know who these ladies are. What was it like? I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, really. It well, was amazing. <laughs> uh, being one platform away and just kind of watching you blow away was, it was insane. <laughs> Yeah, I, I went out there and honestly, I just kind of blacked out. So it's, <laughs> it's real inspiring to start there and finish at the same place. But once I was working, I was the only one there. Yeah, I mean, I knew I wasn't going to be anywhere near these girls. So I just pretended that, that we weren't even in the same building. <laughs> but you maintained an amazing pace. It looked like when you got on the rower, you really hit a wall. I, I said before this started, that was the one thing I really didn't want to see. I, I don't like to row at all. Um, so, yeah, it killed me. Uh, well, you guys all did amazing. Uh, I actually have a question for you from Twitter confirmed. 
And this one is uh, from Robert Ozu. How can Sarah still smile after that workout? You guys are both smiling pretty big. I mean, Dave just gave me all my favorite workouts. <laughs> just needed box jumps <laughs> and ring muscle ups, so I'm very happy. <laughs> and Katrin, you had fun, right? I always have fun. I love working out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you guys actually seemed more composed, so everybody was making a big deal about the altitude. Did it factor in? You said that it was in your head, you want to see how you felt, but, but did you feel like dramatically different from where you usually train? Um, I think I could definitely feel that it was harder to get my heart rate down, like I kind of know what my recovery pace is on the rower. I was like below that, um, but other than that, you kind of just, you go with it. It is what it is. <laughs> sure, and you guys are all used to this, correct? I don't think you ever get used to it. <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah, to find used to it. <laughs> but you train, you train here typically. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, Dave, we got one for Twitter from uh, from Twitter for you, and this one is about the composition of workouts. How much time do you spend coming up with these workouts? Five minutes before the event. <laughs> <laughs> Just hope they have the equipment here. There's obviously a lot of planning and preparation that goes into these um, these events, these workouts. And what's interesting, what I try to tell people is, n none of them are programmed as individual workouts. You have to you have to program them and take into consideration the whole the five weeks. So you know, what's happening in week five will dictate what's happening in week one, and the format of week one will influence the format of week four. And you see that as the as the uh, open develops and as more and more workouts are announced. Essentially, after five weeks, by the end of by tonight, actually people are going to be pretty close to knowing what 16.5 uh, is. You know, you can, you can get there. So you should just tell us. I should. 16.5 um, <laughs> is. But so the workouts, you know, they, they all play. They're not, they're not, I don't create one and then just um, put it independent of all the others. They all, they all sing off of each other. They all play with each other. They're all part of a... Uh, part of the bigger picture, especially at regionals and games. You know, you put them on the board or you write them out or lay them out wherever, however you're planning it, and uh, you look at that one in relation to looking at all the others, and co things are constantly moving, switching. There's usually an anchor point or an anchor event or an anchor um, workout for each, each stage that you kind of build around, and it's, you know, it influences the rest of the, the event or competition. So to answer your question, a lot of time, a lot of time is spent programming these events. I, I'd like to hear all three of you guys kind of banter about this, because we were talking in the car about how much your open placement does or does not matter. Um, can you kind of bring that, that back up? You're saying it, it matters obviously where you stand, but it's not necessarily the best metric for where you're going to finish at the games. Yeah, um, of course I want to do my best, and I treat every single open workout like I would a competition. Like I try and get my full eight to 10 hours sleep, I eat a good breakfast, I show up and I go through a good warm up, um, I strategize with my coach and then give it everything that I have and know that I left it all out there. Um, after that, I try to not look at the leaderboard. Um, my goals would rely on like the games first to make it there and then be the best athlete that I can be there. And um, so if you treat us competition, do it all you can and then you move on and you move on with your training week. And we were talking specifically how it was dramatically different because you can do the Open in your home gym with the people that you train with. So it's a little bit different than when you get to regionals or games. And I'll hear from Sarah first and, and then you next. Um, I just treat everything as a competition. So I think the Open matters. But of course the games is like where I want to be the best. But I don't know. I'm not satisfied if I'm less than 10th place in anything. I think so. Like I just put so much pressure on myself that I want to be the best in everything. So yeah. Dave. The level of athlete that makes it to the regionals, let's just talk about that from the open, is um, vastly different. There are athletes who can do these workouts once and they'll be fine and they're gonna qualify. And there are guys, there are guys and gals who've gone to the games multiple years in a row. They'll be top five in their region. There's others who need to do these multiple times and put in their best efforts just to crack into the top 20. And I think what we're talking to here is we're talking to individuals who are at the very top. They could just do this once and they're, they're gonna qualify. They, they might not win the Open, they might not win their region, but they're still gonna make it there. Most athletes that are qual trying to get to the games or the regionals, let's just say, don't have the luxury that these two do. They, they're still um, further behind in their development as athletes. It goes along the lines, you know, when people used to say, uh, the winner of the games is, is determined by the programming. I, I call bullshit on that. And my best example is someone like Rich. Are you trying to say that 
I programmed the games for him to win for four years in a row and the regionals that year and the open and every other event he wins. No, he's just that well-rounded and that complete. He's the model of what all these athletes should be striving for. It doesn't matter what comes out of the hopper. Now, if you see something that comes out of the hopper and you're like, oh, I'm fucked, well, you're not well-rounded. You're not complete yet. But we could all agree that you're programming the open towards Boz and not towards me, <laughs> right? <laughs> I thought, obviously. I thought you were going to win until you did that little bodybuilding little routine you were on. Yeah, I feel good. You look good. Hey, well, can, we, can, we do a little, good. can we do a little pivot here? I want to talk about, your, you've got military background. We talked to Colonel Generos about how physical fitness is hugely important to soldiers. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit with your experience? And I want to hear from you guys. If, if indeed, you know, CrossFit and physical training, you notice a difference on, on how it makes you a better airman. Well, yeah, you know, that's the whole re most people don't know this about me, but that's the reason I got involved with CrossFit was um, I was in the military for 12 years and while I was deployed to Afghanistan, I was looking for something better. What I was doing at the time wasn't working for the type of mission we were doing. I was running a lot and I was doing a lot of uh, push-ups and sit-ups, but in isolation of each other. I'd run, you know, five, six, seven miles. We'd go do these missions where we'd hike through the mountains for, uh, for you know, a whole evening, get to a target, do some stuff, and then, and then hike out. And the running wasn't, wasn't preparing me for that. So then I started experimenting, researching, found out about CrossFit, looked into it, and eventually decided, okay, I just need to try this. There was a lot of other points in there where I experimented on people, had people try CrossFit before I tried it, and they didn't know that I was experimenting on them. They thought I was doing CrossFit. I saw the results they were having while deployed, so I said, there must be something to this, let me try. And then I did uh, CrossFit while deployed and saw immediate results for what I was doing overseas. And it, that's how actually I got involved with CrossFit. And this was even before, uh, I was doing it overseas before I was ever working for CrossFit or you know, had this job. Mm -hmm. And so you guys, I, how do you notice physical fitness making, making you a better airman? So a lot of Shriver is working on crew shift, which means usually three or two shifts a day, 12, 12 or eight hours. And so the hiking we do tends to be from the uh, dining facility to the computer console. <laughs> but having said that, it's uh, almost with no exceptions that our sharpest airmen, the ones who are disciplined, getting the job done with the most fashion, are the physically fit ones. Yeah, I think uh, this kind of fitness regimen, uh, it enables you to have fun. And uh, fun lets you blow off stress. Blowing off stress makes you a more well-rounded person. And being a well-rounded person makes you better at, uh, at your work and, and better at everything. So. The other, the other interesting thing with it too is um, you don't, when you go to the gym, the global gym, and do the stuff we used to do that I did for eight, nine years in the Navy before I started doing CrossFit, you're not mentally challenged. You're not pushed. You're not, you don't go to a place that in your fitness, it takes you to a place that translates very well to some of the places you have to go to on the battlefield. And that's a powerful thing. So the fact that your workouts can make you stronger here and that out there can help you, that's, that's a, uh, that's powerful. And again, the other aspect of it too is just the community and just working out with your soldiers and working out with your team and, and being um, what it builds. It builds better teams essentially. Yeah. Katrin, you won the title fittest woman on earth last year. The year before you failed to qualify and you said, we talked about this yesterday, but I want, I want the people at home to hear it as well. Uh, you said the pressure is dramatically different, right? Because last year you're coming back really with nothing to prove and now you're coming back as the returning champion. Can you tell me how the pressure is different? Um, of course, there's more pressure. Like last year, didn't even make the games. I guess there's not a lot of people like looking, and you kind of you're in your own little bubble, and it's easy to focus on yourself and and compare yourself to you. Um, but then this year, of course, winning the games, everyone's watching, and the media is talking about you, and and that's harder to block off. But so you just gotta remember where your goals lie, and um, and know that. If I give everything that I have, if I prepare fully and then I give full effort, then, then that's enough. Sarah, so close last year. What should we expect this year, 2016? Um, be smooth. Nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> we should just expect you to be smooth? Where are we going to end up? Beast mode. What you... Oh, okay. Beast mode, yeah. beast mode. So what, what's your expectation for your finish order? Or as long as you're beast mode, you're happy? Oh, of course, I'm aiming to be the fittest on earth, like everybody else that makes it to the games. But first, I have to make it to the games, so, yeah. All right, well, hopefully we'll see you there. I'm pretty <laughs> so confident that we will. <laughs> hey, thanks to all you guys for being here. It was an awesome, awesome performance. Let's give it up, guys, one more time, Shriver. That's going to wrap up the Cool Down Show, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week from Aromas. Good night.